guys, it's Layla. Today I'll speak about lipids, about diacyl glycerols and soaps. Lipids are split into saponifiable and non-saponifiable. Saponifiable are triacyl glycerols, which are oils that are liquid forms. You have glycerous phospholipids, biological waxes. For non-saponifiable, you have cholesterol, bile acids, eicosanoids, etc. So, starting with the general structure of lipids, you need to know they have a backbone. It can either be glycerol, which is a 1,2,3-propane triol, or it can be sphingosine which is in sphingolipids, okay? This is what it looks like. It is a C18. Structure. So what binds to this backbone are fatty acids or alcohols. Alcohols in the case of uh, phospholipids and fatty acids in the case of triacyl glycerol. So you can have two types of fatty acids. You can have saturated or unsaturated. Saturated is all of them are single bonds. Unsaturated means there is a presence of a double bond somewhere in the structure. So the unsaturated can be monounsaturated or polyunsaturated, meaning one double bond or multiple. For one double bond, you can say, for example, butanoic acid. For more than one double bond, you can speak about linolenic acid, which has three double bonds. Okay, and then the third one is phosphatidic acid. Phosphatidic acid looks like this, and it is uh, it fits into the structure of phospholipids only. If you have one fatty acid with glycerol, it is known as monoacyl glycerol. If you have two fatty acids, it's diacyl glycerol, and if you have three, then triacyl glycerol. The first reaction, uh, how you're going to form a TAG, is a sterification. So glycerol or sphingosine as the backbone with the fatty acids. So one glycerol molecule with three fatty acids will give you a triacyl glycerol, as we said. So the bond is ester bond, and we carry out esterification, where you remove three molecules of water and you join um, the oxygen of the glycerol with the uh, carbonyl group of the fatty acids. And if you were using sphingosine, this is what it would look like. As I mentioned earlier, with phospholipids, you have alcohol additions on the third or the last um, carbon. So here you can see that first you're going to have a phosphatidic acid because it's a phospholipid. And then you're going to have the alcohol. So you have fatty acids for the first two groups in phospholipids. And then a phosphoric acid on the third one attached to an alcohol. In this case, the alcohol is choline. But remember, for phospholipids, the phosphate must be there. So some of the examples of the alcohols are choline, ethanol, amine, serine, and glycerol, also inositol. The name of the ph phospholipid will be phosphatidyl inositol or phosphatidyl ethanol amine. The next reaction is saponification, which is the triacyl glycerols with a base such as sodium hydroxide, and the product is soaps or the carboxylate salts and glycerol. So the sodium substitutes the hydrogen on the carboxylic acids and you get salts. Another thing is that um, triacyl glycerols with unsaturated fats are oils. They are liquid at room temperature and fats are solids at room temperature and they are mainly composed of saturated fatty acids. So a process that converts oils to fats or unsaturated to saturated is known as hydrogenation. So you break the double bond and it's fully saturated. Homework for today. So show the hydrolysis of a TAG containing two molecules of acetic acid and one molecule of stearic acid, which is C18, saturated. Question two, draw a phospholipid containing inositol and two molecules of butyric acid. And number three is an MCQ. Liquid forms of TAGs at ordinary room temperatures are called A, oils, B, fats, C, solids, or D, none of these. That is it for this video, guys. See you later. Bye.